So these are some randomly sorted thoughts from Zofia right now. I haven't done a development log in a long time here. There are some good reasons for that, but I'm not going to talk about it at this time. The magic. So first about magic. Right now the extent of magic is, if you press a magic key on a surface, you can interact with that magic in a few different ways. I really wanted to greatly increase the magic's capability, but it's one of the more confusing elements for a lot of people. I see some testers walk away saying they're not quite sure what will happen when they press the magic key on something, just not understanding the concept at all. On the other hand, some people really like experimenting with the magic, and they're thrilled to find new ways to use it. So I'm not actually sure what I want to do with that, or if I'm going to change it or make it complex. I think I'm just going to leave it as is for right now. There are currently a few airship levels within Sophia, and these aren't well distinguished between the other levels. The airship levels are ones that require the use of the airship, while the main levels do not. These maps are in a weird position, they aren't really big enough to like, properly fully explore, and the airship mechanics are not fleshed out enough for it to really shine. If I had to do these all over again, I would probably make the maps much, much larger with the intent that you do some more optional exploring. People generally like these levels in co-op, but not so much in single player. Uh, but also vice versa, the more linear levels they don't like as much in co-op, but they like it more in single player. So it's kind of in a weird spot. Speaking of levels. So feedback for Zofia has been actually pretty front-loaded. I get a lot of people that play the first few levels and then when it gets uh, a little bare bones they usually stop playing. This has led to a lot of focus being placed on the early game, not a lot in the late game. I would say the first four areas are the strongest levels while the last two or three are probably the weakest levels. Uh, testers said they like the sprawling multi-route areas like Frozen Fort, so that's something I like to work a little into the other areas. Feedback is actually kind of wonky. We don't get a lot of feedback, and it's usually only about specific things when we do. Like, originally we had a life system where if you died three times, you'd fail the level and have to restart it. I'm not looking at the timeline, but that design was in the game for probably about two years. Uh, before someone had actually made a comment on it, which was basically, hey, this kind of sucks, why is this here? We switched it to losing money when you die, and I haven't heard anything about that, so I'm sure it's probably fine. There are probably some other glaring flaws or issues that I just haven't noticed because I'm too close to the project to see these things, but no one's commented on, so... kind of going undetected. There's a lot to say about combat. A lot. So I'm going to just try and sum it up real quick. I think the combat's okay. I think the weapons and armor need a little bit more flavor. I wish there was more enemy states, like being able to knock them down, or uh, better, different ways of stunning. The context of the game has you fighting a lot of legionish enemies, and in hindsight I wish I had dove more into magic enemies or monsters. There was some fights against larger enemies, but this has been really hard to make it feel right in first person as your viewpoint's kind of limited, and doubly so for the otters who are half the height of the normal person. I've seen this brought up a few times, so I think it's worth mentioning. So Zofia is actually a pretty largely scoped game. When it comes to your character, you have kind of an actually very narrow scope. Your origin is always part of the Legion, you're always going to be blighted, and you're always going to end up being a Seeker. As a comparison, this would be the equivalent of playing a Dungeons & Dragons campaign, but you always have to play a Paladin with a specific oath. We had a brief discussion about different classes, but having different classes would mean adding a bunch of different solutions to things, as well as some content you wouldn't be able to access, but maybe content you would be able to access, and it would have just blown up the scope. It's not that classes aren't on the table, it's just right now they're probably not going to be on the table. These are just some random thoughts I've had on things that I'm looking at, but I could be off the mark on them. Development's been pretty hard the last several months, and there's lots of things that I keep finding where we keep going back and making a bunch of corrections because there was a small oversight, or maybe something just wasn't clicking as well as it should have. And those corrections are actually getting pretty difficult now. Making changes to, say, like the enemies. There's a lot of enemies now, and there's a lot of finicking, and you gotta make sure every single one of them works right, so it's just a lot to test and implement. Anyways, that's all I got.